I would like to introduce uh, the cyber infrastructure for smart and connected communities. And this is the work that we actually continue doing uh, since 2002, 2003, uh, on not really high performance computing, although I come from uh, high performance computing centers. But this is something that uh, uh, when we are doing uh, grid computing, we are thinking how to take advantage of grid computing by extending to a sensor sensor network. And it turned out to be a very fruitful uh, kind of a direction that we developed. So this is the kind of story that I'd like to uh, tell you about, uh, starting from, uh, say, 10 years back. And before I started the story, I would like to introduce you a little bit of our centers. It's no different from usual uh, supercomputing center, but there's one uh, big difference our, our, um, uh, in terms of uh, cyber infrastructure. And this is a, a basic um, uh, NCSC milestone, the, our center's milestone. Uh, we are established in, in uh, 1991. And uh, so you can see the, the full uh, history. And uh, the key will be uh, actually uh, 2000, uh, 1997 and 2003. And so um, in 1990, uh, 1999, Taiwan has a big earthquake. And this earthquake actually, um, the, the central Taiwan, um, there's a, a very important archiving centers is completely demolished. So uh, the government think uh, they are. And the second thing is you have to make sure that your, uh, uh, your uh, document can escape. Uh, if you're in an electronic format, it will be easier to escape. So um, our center become a, uh, was given a mission um, to build this kind of infrastructure to allow uh, the archive, uh, you can archive uh, digitally also the document that archive, electronic document can escape. So we built, uh, instead of headquarter, now I'm, uh, my office uh, is, and then extended to a uh, uh, Central Taiwan and Southern Taiwan. So we have three centers. And then three centers has to be connected by network. So it's become a very spontaneous um, development that uh, we have to develop not only a super computing center because we distributed our uh, centers already. Uh, each one actually in, turn, in approximately 150 uh, kilometers uh, in distance away. And so uh, we have to have a network to connect them together. And so this is a basic, uh, the basic structure of our centers. So in essence, uh, it is a kind of cyber infrastructures. And so this is what we, we do. And um, let me extend it a bit about our uh, HPC clusters. And we actually starting here, uh, we, the last supercomputer that we built is in 2011. And it's 177 teraflops. And it's an old machine, and it's out of top 500 already. Uh, so you may know it. Or, and, but the difference is in, uh, is in two, 2016, and uh, we uh, extended our, we kind of uh, um, extended our network backbone. And I'll, I'll um, elaborate this, this a little bit further. And uh, if you look at the uh, supercomputer that we have, here in uh, 2000, uh, as I said, in 2011, we have 177 teraflops. And uh, it's old machines. And now we're starting to build uh, new machines. And so this year we built up, uh, starting uh, build up the petaflops machines. Um, and it is just finished in, it will be 1.73 petaflops. And uh, uh, it should be open uh, in service in 2000. 18 next year. Um, but the, there's a big difference is we starting thinking about how to take advantage of HPC for um, another big trend, which is AI uh, development. So our government decided uh, this, this year to uh, uh, give 166 million US dollars. Um, it's given in four years time. And uh, uh, he hoped that we can start deploying uh, kind of build AI platform in a national scale for uh, the entire uh, academia plus the government and industry. But this is kind of more for prototyping. 
uh, if you want to develop an algorithm, you can take advantage of this kind of platform. So you can see there's a big difference from 177 to uh, uh, 1.73. And here, I think we are expecting uh, at least the 20 petaflop machines uh, uh, beyond uh, 2018. And uh, um, in separations, uh, uh, you, you may know that the big data uh, is a big trend already. And uh, our center is also, uh, also is considering uh, to uh, kind of providing uh, big data services. So here is 1.5 petabytes, uh, it's a big data. It's, uh, in, it's, um, it is able to accommodate uh, kind of a larger data computing. So this is a dedicated data. But this kind of thing is experimental. So the main thing is still be on this kind of HPC cluster. And we have a big storage too. Uh, the storage is uh, 8.7 petabytes is still growing. Uh, we are expecting the grow to, uh, 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 to double it. And uh, uh, this is something that I like to talk a little bit more. And uh, so our center since 1997, uh, we're starting uh, collaborating with um, um, on Taiwan's uh, Ministry of Education. And they hope that uh, education network and research network can combine together. And NCC should be helping on mainly on research network, but can be extended to educational network. So in 2003, we were able, if you remember that, we uh, just decided because of big earthquake, decided to uh, distribute our network. So this is something that we did. And uh, so in 2003, we, we uh, built a Taiwan Advanced Research Educational Network, uh, in short, uh, Twaren. Uh, so this Twaren was built uh, in three, there's a three center here, you can see uh, Shinchu, uh, Taichung, and Tainan, these three centers. And the, the backbone actually now is already 100 gigabits. And uh, in between, there's a, a distribution of universities. So we provide a kind of a gigapop uh, services to the university, they connect them. And so they become a kind of regional or local uh, uh, super norm. And so this kind of structure enable us to uh, advance uh, next generation research, which is on distributed, high performance distributed research. And this is actually the ultimate story uh, from 2003 till now. And um, so I will how to take advantage of this kind of uh, infrastructure, or so-called cyber infrastructures. And there's a uh, uh, different thinking. Uh, one thinking uh, from our center perspective, which is a super computing centers. We are focusing on infrastructures, but now we actually turn around that infrastructure actually is not the things to drive value. Actually, it's the data itself. So this is a big change uh, of our center. So uh, our center has a moving from HP center to towards a kind of a, not just big data center, but purely big, uh, purely data centers. So this is the kind of a direction that we are moving. So um, the key things, uh, I mentioned this uh, very old paper, 2001, uh, just a recap that, uh, uh, as I mentioned, that we actually combining HPC and the networking. And actually uh, in 2001, this is a very famous uh, uh, paper talking about uh, optical fibers actually um, grow the speed of the, um, the scale actually and also the cost of uh, performance actually much, much uh, accelerate much faster than the storage and the chips, uh, CPU chips. So you can see here is almost every nine months this uh, uh, doubled. So it's kind of exponential growth uh, in 2001. So this is a story back behind when we are considering that we are doing high performance computing and we have to uh, get a better performance uh, if you are doing simulations or um, other kind of computing uh, jobs. Actually, how to take advantage of the network will be a next kind of a, a big um, way. So what we started um, is um, how to think about infrastructure. We are thinking, uh, uh, for me, myself, because uh, as a, uh, people working on HPC, it's seldom thinking about small things like sensors. But actually, uh, if we want to understand things, we, were, we usually adopt the sensing uh, uh, kind of uh, 
sense, sensor way of thinking, uh, which means uh, just like a body, you know, you have hands, you have a, a smell, and you have all sorts of things, you have touch, you are actually sensing your environment, your uh, surroundings. So, um, so sensing is really crucial, but how to get the sensing from understanding, this is a big long way uh, since uh, the early uh, 2000s. So that's what we did when we do uh, uh, grid computing um, back in uh, 2002 and 2003. And so we developed something uh, for distributed system for ecological, long-term eco ecological research and also for uh, SARS. This is a famous one uh, because in 2000, I remember in 2000, um, 2003, actually we have a, a SARS outbreak, it's epidemic um, outbreak. And uh, I remember that uh, in July, we have a meeting in, uh, in June, we had the meeting in Australia, in Melbourne with David. And uh, I attended, um, but the SARS actually at the time was uh, outbreak already. So I told the story of the SARS. So this is a uh, long-term uh, development. Uh, so ultimately we are thinking that the sensor will be distributed around. It will pumping data, generate data and pumping data back. And then the HPC will play the roles uh, to do the anal analysis. So at that time, we actually more focusing on uh, say data management, how to stream data back and how to deploy large scale of the uh, sensor arrays. Uh, in, a, in a national scale, in a large scale, and ultimately in a global scale, okay? At that time, we already had that kind of thinking, and the back end should be HPC. But the story actually evolved a uh, similar way, but in different direction. So this is what we did uh, 10 years ago. Uh, this is Taiwan, and uh, from north to south, approximately 450, uh, 100, uh, sorry, 450 kilometers. And so what we're thinking is uh, there's long-term uh, ecological observatories uh, sites. And so we try to connect them together from uh, alpine environment to underwater uh, coral reef environment. So this is uh, the alpine lake. Uh, the lake in high mountain uh, is well preserved. So we put the sensors and we were able to, um, this is a long, long way development. We are able to extend it to the global uh, scale. So now we call the global uh, long-term uh, leg uh, observatory network. And here we initially, we are not just thinking about uh, sensors, we are thinking about instruments, how to connect instruments. So this is the one they're actually collaborating with the Osaka universities. They have a high voltage uh, microscopy. And so we try to collaborate with them and try to see the samples. So this is a, another extension for so what we call the sensors. So it's not necessarily small sensors. It can be a, a big instrument. Uh, so this is underwater. I'll uh, elaborate more later. And then back end, we do a lot of modeling. So now we have uh, uh, data pumping in from the environment uh, using a distributed uh, uh, kind of network, sensor network. And then we have to learn from data. So um, in the back end, uh, actually the learning is based on a hypothesis. So which means we are building some mathematical models and try to uh, put it in this, uh, into the uh, computer uh, code and write kind of a, uh, writing a code and try to build up the model and then to predict based on the hypothesis that we, we made. So this is the kind of learning procedures uh, that we are thinking. But actually nowadays more on the data itself, which is not, it's less depending on the mathematical model based on hypothesis, but based on the data per se. So this is the new trend that we did. That's what I mean, uh, we are from HPC centers. HPC about modeling, usually it's a big model, to small data, but now we have a larger data. But uh, the, the model itself is trying to interpret the data. So this is a more recent uh, development results. Uh, as I said, we actually put a uh, sensor around the uh, environment. This is one of the environment they put. We put uh, the sensor underwater. In the Southern Taiwan, uh, it is at the tip of the, what we call the coral triangles in the world. So we will have a very rich environment of coral reef, also in Australia. And by the way, we actually, from this research, we also, um, kind of a partner with uh, AIMS, AIMS. 
which is responsible for coral reef, uh, great, Bar great barrier reef research. And the partnership become a kind of global coral reef um, long-term observation network. Uh, but it is not that active. But this is something that we collaborate together. Um, an extension of it. And so NCC actually, we uh, put the sensors, uh, including video camera, underwater. But the difference is from the usual one is we put the sensor underwater and do long-term observations in instead of put the camera underwater just for a few hours and for a few days or a few weeks. We actually put the uh, video camera underwater 24-7 and, and the whole year round. And uh, we collect tons of data. Um, at that time, um, the funding actually from uh, another company, Taiwan Power, Taiwan Power Company, the company support us to uh, protect the environment, preserve the environment. But the data accumulated, it was used for educational purpose. But then we were, in 2009, we thinking maybe we can uh, use that for scientific research. So we team up with uh, Edinburgh, University of Edinburgh, and also uh, uh, CWI of uh, Netherlands, and also uh, University of Catania from Italy. And each team actually is responsible for how to uh, uh, kind of, one is to uh, how to extract the content from, uh, from the video, and one is uh, how to uh, reasoning it, okay? So it's very kind of a pre-era of artificial intelligence. And so in Taiwan, we were able to, uh, uh, well, this is our usual work. We uh, take the video camera, streaming back, and make it uh, available everywhere. So if you in Australia or in in US or in Europe, you can uh, go to the website and see this video. Even now, actually, you can hook up to the website to see what's happening uh, underwater uh, in southern Taiwan and to observe the uh, coral reef ecosystem there. Here, we're not just focusing on the uh, coral reef, but a coral reef ecosystem. Uh, in this uh, research, we are uh, more focusing on the coral reef fish. And so you can see here, these some statistics. Um, the video in total, there's a 10 camera, and we're collecting, uh, uh, it's a, uh, for research purpose, we actually recollected it. So um, for the two years uh, um, period, we're collecting 112 terabytes data and we try to analyze it. And uh, um, so from there, we generate a descriptive data, which is approximately 20 terabytes. And we were able to detect fishes. I mean, fishes from the video camera directory. So you can see here, it's, uh, I think it's a 10, uh, around 10 gig uh, uh, fishes. So, um, so we make, we, we think, uh, we are joking uh, to our, our, within our team that this, this size of data is actually bigger than Google, <laughs> what Google collected. Uh, but anyway, this is a very focusing on the fish uh, behavior research. And the summary data was 500 gigabytes. So we are targeting on one second query answering. So if you want answering how many fish abundance in this area, in what species, you can respond in, in one second over this 100 terabytes data. It might be not that difficult nowadays, but it was quite difficult in, back in 2009, 2010. So uh, also we uh, developed some smart uh, user interface and, uh, to providing scientists to have a deep insight to see what's happening. And all the, um, but this tool, uh, uh, we're using a supercomputer to compute it, uh, put the 2000 nodes, um, uh, we allocate 2,000 nodes to calculate the entire uh, uh, videos. So this is what we did um, derived back in 2003 when we think it put the sensors uh, in the environment and try to observe what's happening. And we are thinking from there whether we can build a model to understand the data. So this is the ultimate result um, after 2002-2003's uh, 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 initial work. And for the leg, uh, I mentioned the leg. The leg was able, if you remember that, the buoy stuff uh, in the alpine lake. And so this is a lake that we uh, further developed. We developed the global lake ecological observation, observation, observation on network, uh, or GLEON. And now we were able to uh, extend it to 25,000 lakes. So even a PhD student can do kind of global research. 
So this is something we think is very, very big for next uh, step. And there's some uh, kind of a multi-lex uh, comparisons uh, paper published already in these uh, uh, five years. Since 2005, 2004, 2005, when we started this kind of work, uh, it's only a single leg research. But now, um, uh, in 2017, so we were able to extend it to, uh, say, a 10 legs or 50 legs research. Uh, so there's a tw uh, 25,000 legs, and we hope that Australia actually is part of the partnership. And so this is something that uh, uh, really pushed the, um, the science to the edge. And this is kind of uh, infrastructure to, to enable um, uh, the fish research that I just mentioned. The project, uh, project name is Fish for Knowledge. Uh, you can check uh, Google uh, for this project if you are interested. There's uh, um, approximately, in three years, approximately 60 paper publications. And uh, there's uh, software available. And also there's um, a fish database available as well. So if you Google this, uh, uh, this uh, word, and you can uh, download all the uh, information you need, right? So this is something that we uh, build, the, when we build the data and we try to reasoning the data. And there's a one project called uh, um, Link Data. And this Link Data already provides some kind of semantics for the data we collected. So we can facilitate our development uh, to build a model understanding what the data said. Okay, so this is the model that we adopted. And in particular, the one that we do for the research, actually we adopt these semantics from, uh, uh, this is a US fish and agriculture organizations. We adopt the semantics they built already. So we don't wanna rebuild the world and we just adopt what people has developed already. And uh, so um, let's now move almost to uh, uh, HPC to data. If you have HPC and try to build the model for the data, it's very different when you build the model for CFD, computational fluid dynamics, or um, mechanical engineering, uh, to understand what's happening in a uh, um, in, uh, kind of mechanical system, or a turbines or something. But from the data itself, it's really from different perspective. And this is something that we learned from um, the, the things that I just mentioned, the fish for knowledge projects. So if you look at here, when you think of about uh, 1,000 uh, terabytes, it's really awful lot of uh, data. But how, what's happening there? So if you look at this, uh, the data that we collected, yeah, these are some uh, samples. And so you can see there's, a, for instance, the one that were affected disturbances introduced by the environment. Here, there's a lot of algae. And sometimes, they were, because the temperature differences, it introduced some of the, if you have a something, uh, well, the, the water can be murky, and uh, you will blur, uh, the quality was bad, and you blur the waters. So this is a very high blur. And sometimes it's about the, the glitches in the systems. So you have a kind of encoding problems. And uh, uh, sometimes, because our camera is not really fixed on one thing, we will move it around during the research period. And this is, a, uh, so we, when we move here, can you see the fish here? It's very difficult, right? if this high is fish hiding somewhere, and you are very difficult to find it. And uh, uh, this is a normal one that we really can use for research, um, in particular on the fish. And fish is a 2D animals. So it can be from 2D to 3D, actually, uh, from one direction to the others, the shape would change completely. And, but at the time, we didn't use neural network. Deep learning is not that popular. We just use traditional, but the kind of cocktail methods try to extract the fishes and find the trajectory of fishes. So here you can see only 13% uh, data is available uh, for um, the entire uh, research. So we have the filtering, filtering out uh, the other um, approximately 90% of the data. So which means you, although you have a large amount of large volume of data, but actually you have to make sure the data is, is the quality of the data is sufficient for you to really look into it for science. Okay. So this is something that we learn uh, from this research. Okay, so um, here, another very interesting issue is uh, the Institute, uh, actually when we do the sensors, and there's some special vehicles for sensors. 
What I mean the vehicle, including the fuel stations and research ships and aircraft satellites. If you extend in the idea uh, larger, and so we are thinking about satellites. Uh, we are very fortunate because we have a sister institute, which is the uh, National Space Organizations or National Space Centers, and they have two satellites in the uh, outer space. So we actually help them collecting information back, the remote sensing uh, data back. Also, there's some data for uh, meteorological uh, uh, information as well. And we have uh, uh, also sister institute on the uh, ocean uh, research, and they have their own research ships. So we also put the sensor on the ships um, to observe. So uh, this is additional uh, things when we think about the special. Now drone is very popular, right? So you can fly drone, it's kind of similar ideas. So you need the vehicles and put the camera on the drones means put the sensor on the vehicles. So the vehicle will become another crucial issue. So if you say put the submarine to observe what's happening on the waters and in particular the under the ocean flows, uh, which is a, a very crucial for uh, either economic reason or defense reasons. And so this is something that uh, uh, we think is crucial. So we actually involve uh, on this one as well. And um, uh, the, so now we talk about IoT, the sensor can talk to each other, so sensor can talk to computers. So you even develop further. But the track actually is similar, which is not purely from a big silos, a big, uh, um, HPC machines, but you have to include, in terms of ecosystem, you have to include the sensor sensor network. You have to include the IoT, which is even extended in a very large scales. And the understanding is not purely based on modeling uh, only. It kind of, a, from hypothesis now, we are moving to discovery. And so we are more focusing on to observe the phenomena and also the behaviors. So behaviors become a very critical uh, kind of a research. And also we're talking about how they related to human being. So now we're, we are moving from uh, the usual research to a scientific query or a scientific understanding to now we are uh, working on more understanding between the environment or the one that you observe or the science with the human being. So this is more towards what we call now the smart cities or smart and connected communities. Okay, so this is what I said. How about city jungles? Okay. So this is just a, a, a recap. Um, but the data actually, although it's different, but we found uh, from this research, uh, from kind of in terms of um, the things, the science still conducted on uh, from sensor network to, uh, um, to HPC, um, like HPC centers. And you can see actually the data ecosystem dominate the whole process. And the data actually not just mere data lay on uh, the storage or on your memory. What we found actually data has a life cycle. This is a, uh, although people are studying in data science or already know it, but from, for us, we are focusing on HPC. We are, this really amaz amazing to us. So in, for instance, this example, uh, Meshner in 1997, I think he's an ecologist. Uh, he um, actually proposed this kind of uh, things. Uh, you can say in the um, Y axis, it, it's entropy, information entropy actually. And the X axis is the time. So if you're collecting data, from the time you publish the data, actually data is, de is decaying, is dying. So data has a life cycle. This is really amazing to me. And so you have to, to put uh, technology or some management methods in order to uh, avoid the data to uh, kind of to demise. So if you look here, the data actually from the time pub, uh, of uh, publications, uh, if, you, if you don't put any methods to uh, preserve it, you was kind of decaying, okay? In my accident, you lost your data. So everyone had got these experiences. Your heart did collapse and or your my your master degree thesis or PhD uh, thesis, if you didn't have a copy, you are in jeopardized um, to graduate in time. So, uh, so this is something that uh, data actually, it's different what we think. It, it's a living things. When you see it's a zero and one, actually it is not. Uh, if you look from the, con uh, the content perspective. So here we are uh, talking about, uh, so now we have uh, data. So we're talking about analysis. 
um, how to make the cyber infrastructures um, to take, make the city more kind of uh, manageable and make the city living more uh, uh, comfortable and more productive. And here, this is a, a little bit background. And actually, there's a lot of smart city initiatives. But mostly, for instance, here, Intelligent Community Forum. This is an international forum. And Taiwan has a very, Taiwan City has very interested, uh, they are very interested to uh, uh, invest uh, time and energies, try to compete in ICF. But the competition actually mainly on the, uh, the networking. So how do people take advantage of networking? Uh, mobile phone is one of the key. And so this is something that uh, Taiwan City is very interested. And also uh, coupling with uh, this uh, network stuff, um, there's an open data initiative. So when we're collecting data from the network, what we can do? So we call the digital opportunities. So central government in Taiwan actually like to uh, make the data more openly, uh, but it's still ongoing uh, kind of a, a movement at the moment. We haven't seen the big changes, but this is something that we are pushing forward in terms of smart cities. So you can see comparing to the, the previous uh, uh, research work that we have been conducted since uh, 2000 something. And here you, you can see from the city itself, it did similar things in terms of uh, a framework. So this is uh, very interesting. So in 2014, um, actually we do some surveys. So these are three major topics that the citizen, the people itself will be interested. Okay, so this is the first one will be a disaster warning system. Okay, the climate, uh, climate change or something. Uh, in Taiwan, because we are infested with Typhoon earthquake. So to this is this no, not surprised that we, we will have this number one voting, that people are really concerned about disaster warning system. So our development will move in uh, from the ecological research to uh, say SARS and uh, um, say flooding, these kind of things. I'll, I'll talk a little bit later on. And uh, also people are talk, uh, very care about the transportation, how to make the transportation more kind of intelligence. And so people can, um, um, can, can, uh, can go to the place they really want to go. And the third one, of course, is about the health. Okay, how do you improve the medical information system? So that this is a disaster we have been conducted. Uh, so along with what we developed for ecologies, similar framework. And so you can see we, we collaborate with water resource agencies. So all the CCTV, or not just CCTV, or the say water level gauges, um, all the fuel station uh, that managed by the central government was, all the information was streaming back to NCFC. So there's more than 1,000 um, um, sensors, including a CCTV. And so all the information we collected. So there's become a lot of issues on how to manage the data, how to visualize data, how to make the data meaningful. And also for the earthquake part, Taiwan has more than uh, 20,000 um, 20, bridges. So bridges kind of playing the road, connecting uh, people around. If bridge collapses, which means you can't travel from one place to the other. So we also have a sensors on the bridges. And when, the, when there's a flooding come, usually there's a scouring effects. And some, this is a major impact of the flooding and also earthquake as well because of the seepage. Uh, seepage. So uh, you, the result will be the, the bridge collapsing. So we put the sensor collect, collecting also in a long-term manner. So you can see uh, there's a 20,000 uh, records per second. So this is kind of scare and the speed that we collect and how to respond in the real time. These are real challenges. And this is our actually from the HVC perspective, this is something that we want to do. So you can see here, we are moving from, from uh, modeling the information, modeling the data, and then look into the data and also manage the data. And the data management actually, uh, if you're familiar with the big data, now we have a data volume and data velocity as well, okay? And now the data complexity also increased. Okay, this is another one that we do. Uh, this is a climate change and we do the weather simulations and this is a traditional HPC. And also we're collaborating with the local government. They have a uh, power plant. So they 
they burn something and they generate energies. So it introduced the um, pollution, air pollution. So we also monitor the air pollution. So we're coupling together to see what's happening. So you can see there's a broad and uh, science on uh, research and, and also engineering research on this part in order to understand better. Now, now we can predict better as well. And so this is something about the Chronicle. Um, I'm running out of time. Okay, I'm probably finished in five minutes. Okay, this is the kind of uh, health and chronic care and the SARS-3 that I mentioned. So we were able to extend it, the framework itself, the SARS, SARS has passed. So we actually uh, extended to uh, asthma, for example, asthma care. So asthma care, we were able to connecting with uh, uh, 13,000 patients and 400 physicians. They all participated and 400 clinics and, and hospi hospitals. And this definitely need required, it's a chronic disease. So you definitely need kind of uh, essentials and also distribute the manners. So you can manage the asthma better. So this is a statistic that how we improve it by introducing the sensors. So you, you have a gadgets uh, to uh, control your asthma and to take the medicine every day. So men, the uh, medical doctor can observe it in real time to what's happening now. So this, this by simply introduce this kind of a computing um, architecture actually can improve uh, the medical uh, treatment already. So this is what our recent work. Uh, we do a vehicle and flooding by introducing uh, machine learning. And uh, uh, we uh, introduce a new, uh, um, we call it a PM 2.5 air box uh, sensors. And now we are expand, sending uh, more than 1,000 uh, air box around. It's buttoned up. It's more like uh, citizen science. And uh, so uh, this is the traffic that we did. Okay, this is Taipei City. So the difference is you can see here yeah, actually is uh, motorcycles. And so this is the architecture that we did here. Okay, I skip it, just to give you an uh, idea. And this is, so we're using uh, TensorFlow, try to judge uh, whether it's raining or um, in real time or it's uh, sunny days. It, whether we should trigger a flooding alert or not. There's another system that actually help uh, the flooding uh, things. So this is kind of triggering uh, support. And also the flash files, can we find um, from the flash file, can we find uh, help the firefighters uh, to see what's happening? And can we predict the flash file? So now we can detect seven seconds earlier. It's not a lot, but uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it's life-saving uh, seconds. Uh, you can really move to the exit. Uh, if you know the, there's an exit in the vicinity. And now we work with a, a museum. Um, and it's, it's an ongoing project, so you can uh, observe the people and they, how they move, where is the hotspot. And now this year we are trying to, uh, uh, using uh, the CCTV, try to see, uh, recognize whether female or male, and recognize the edges and the genders. So we will do more kind of a, uh, uh, analytics, try to understand better uh, how the visitors are, you, uh, are using the museum exhibitions. And this is the box. Uh, we are extending from Taiwan to the globe. And so Southeast Asia and also Japan and Korea, also some Europe. So we are extending it at the moment. It's PM 2.5. And this is uh, uh, one example of uh, only PM 10. PM 10 is a uh, particular, uh, uh, it's very small particles. And the P PM 2.5, PM 10, it, it is the size of the particles. Here is the definition of the particles uh, per cubic microgram. And uh, it was really affect your lungs and introduce more diseases. So we are combining systems together at the moment. So I skip this, skip this, skip this, you should note this. All right, so this is the whole picture they are doing. Okay, I think I stop here. Though I have many uh, beautiful pictures and video. <laughs> Sorry, I prepared 60 uh, slides. And, uh, but I quickly uh, uh, throwing around, this is what we're doing, text mining. And so we are helping actually Ministry of Defense and uh, try to collect information um, uh, from China. <laughs> we are actually um, um, 
from Taiwan and China as well, because Taiwan actually very democratized and there's a lot of protest. So we're helping them. And this is one of the applications. Another collaboration with uh, uh, the uh, um, commerce institutes, they are trying to um, survey uh, in the shopping mall, what's the behaviors and they send the text back. So we analyze the text and along with, uh, um, with the information to see what's happening now. So this is something that we applied for the text mining. All right, so I'm sorry, I have to move it very quickly, but I'm happy to answer a question later on. So this is uh, uh, the current uh, AI computing infrastructures. Uh, just give you a, a quick uh, glimpse. Um, it's a CPU GPU uh, things. Uh, it's a kind of coupling of CPU GPU. We probably will follow uh, ABCI of uh, AIST Japan uh, architectures. So we're following their architecture to build this uh, AI platform. Right. Uh, the last thing is uh, software defining. But I think I stop here, but I'm happy to introduce. This is something that I prepared, uh, including the architecture and the network architectures. So I'm very happy to, uh, to answer any questions if you're interested in any part of it.